happy Monday, Epiphany. It's great to see you uh, and continue our reading through the Gospel of John. I, I gave you a big assignment uh, over the weekend. Uh, we talked about um, how you were made to uh, abide with God. Uh, first of all, that, that as the, the branch to the vine or to the stalk, we're connected to God. And so, so we abide. He says four things. Uh, in chapter 15, right at the end, sort of verses 8 through 17. Abide in me, love one another. You were chosen, I made you, go bear fruit. So abide in me, link with God. Secondly, love one another, because I love you. Third, I made you, you were chosen before time. And number four, go out there and bear fruit. So, where do you sit with those things? We're in the midst now, chapter 15, 16, and 17, of the longest monologue that Jesus has in the Bible. And, and he's, he's really sort of, it's sort of the second part. There's two parts of this great uh, uh, um, um, Passover meal, right? This Last Supper meal that he has there in the upper room. Uh, 13 through 14 or the first part, and he's saying, I'm going to be with you, I will not abandon you, uh, and here's some ways in which I'm going to be with you, and he gives us some examples. And then, and then now we go into this very long monologue uh, about how, in 15, 16, and 17, how, well, really the end, of, right now starting uh, first, uh, chapter 15, verse 18, through the, the rest of um, 16 and into 17, how Jesus is passing on this message to his disciples. So let's, let's take a look at that here uh, in chapter 15, verse 18. We'll begin to read. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world loves you as it loves you as its own, because you do not belong, but because you do not belong to this world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Now, this makes us remember earlier in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 23. We'll go back and look at that real quick. Where Jesus is making this distinction about his differentiation, about how he was born from above. Remember, he talks to Nicodemus in chapter 3 about that. And then again in chapter 8, he says again, uh, Jesus says to them, I'm going away, and you will search for me, but you will die in your sins. Where I'm going, you cannot come. Then the Jew said, is he going to kill himself? Is that what he means by saying, where I'm going, you cannot come? And then Jesus says, this is the point I wanted to get to. Jesus says to them, verse 23, chapter 8, You are from below and I'm from above. You are of this world and I'm not of this world. I've told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die uh, in your sins unless you believe that I am he. Unless you're born from above. And that's the point that Jesus is making here. He's drawing this line of distinction for the disciples and saying, you are like me. I have chosen you. You are born from above. You do not belong to this world. If you did, the world would accept you and love you. And, and uh, you would do the things that the world required of you. But you won't because you're like me. You're born from above and I've chosen you. And you have to remember that too, friends, that you were chosen. Right? You were chosen out of another place to come to this space, to be here, to grow right in the good soil that Jesus has set us in. Verse 20, remember the word that I said to you? Servants are not greater than their master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. Now Jesus is saying something else here in this going away message. He's saying you are going to be persecuted for your faith. You are going to experience some of the same things that I experienced, and it won't be great. But remember, you were born from above. You were chosen for this work, and then you will move on. And I promised you where I'm going, remember just a couple of, uh, chapters back, I promised you there'll be a mansion for you. I promised you that, that the vine stock that I am, if you are connected to me, you'll be okay and you'll bear good fruit. I've already promised you those things. Now, if you believe what I said to you, now you got to accept this part. And this is the, the second part of this dinner discussion that Jesus is having. Verse 21. 
but they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. This is sort of an interesting point. Follow this closely. What Jesus is saying is, is now that you know what it means to live in the kingdom of God, now that you know what it means to be born from above, now you have accountability for your life. And that's true for me and you as well. And I'd invite you to think about uh, this question today. Now that you know that you were brought into this world and you will go out of this world, that you're from above and you're not from here, and that you'll go back to above because and Jesus has made a place for you, are you accountable for this reality? Do you believe it? And how is it lived out in your life? Are you accountable for the fact that you are from beyond to beyond? Give that some thought. Pray about that. I pray for you. You're in my heart. I love you. Peace upon your soul.